Hello, my name is Alex Wiseman. We're here to talk about CIE 401, Globalization and Contextualization. This week we are looking at world culture. And we're using this little title, World Culture or Global Agenda, to highlight the fact that there has been recently, especially in a comparative and international education uh, publications, a little bit of a... Um, a back and forth, a discussion, a debate about what world culture is and how it applies to comparative and international education. We're going to take uh, one version of that and look at how world culture can be applied to our broader context of globalization and contextualization. So we'll see how it goes. Um, there are some interesting texts that you might want to consider. One is this book, World Culture, by Lechner and Boli. You will recognize their names uh, because they're the same names that are on our globalization reader text. Uh, so Lechner and Boli have uh, collaborated on a couple of different publications. Um, we, don't, we aren't actually using this World Culture book in our globalization and contextualization class. However, I think that it is highly relevant, and I, I did seriously consider using it at one point. The other one is this, I'm looking up here because it's on my shelf, but I'm not going to take it down because that would require more effort. Um, but there's this book right here, The Impact of Comparative Education Research on Institutional Theory, <clears throat> excuse me, that I edited with uh, David Baker, who you would recognize from the author of The Schooled Society that we're also reading for this class, uh, all the way back in 2006, seems like ancient history now. Um, but we, we looked at a couple of different things and uh, specifically tried to collect chapters together that talked about how institutional theory, which focuses on the world culture branch of institutional theory, is being used in comparative education research and how the two are sort of, as you can tell from the title of a, one of our intro chapter, are symbiotically related to one another. So this has become a really interesting uh, discussion in comparative and international education and has led to uh, a lot of different uh, articles. Um, here's one that I did. You can see there are three different ones here. Oops, that goes up too high. Here's one that I did uh, just this past year in 2003 with uh, Fernanda Estes and David Baker uh, looking at globalization and comparative education research, ways that neo-institutional theory was um, mistakenly conceived or, or ways that applications of the theory to comparative education research were not necessarily being um, uh, used very appropriately shall we say. So uh, we found that important to do. Um, we also did, and let me see if I can adjust this so you can see the title. Uh, there we go. Uh, I did a chapter with um, Audrey Chase Mayoral, who you may recognize from the, um, uh, as someone else at Lehigh, uh, for the annual review of comparative and international education back in 2013, last year, uh, where we talked about how we could be shifting the discourse on neo-institutional theory in comparative and international education in particular, and uh, talking about how to use this as a way of addressing issues of culture at both the macro and micro levels. And then let me take off the ink one more time. And then probably the, the most read article that we have recently published, again, you'll, you'll notice the authors tend to be the same because we're collaborating with one another quite uh, strongly, has, was published in Compare last year online, because uh, online first, it'll come out in print afterwards. And uh, we were looking at comparative education research that was framed by neo-institutional theory and looking at different approaches and conflicting assumptions, as the title suggests. So uh, I've been involved in the discussion about this for quite some time. There are um, many who are also a part of this debate. Um, we are often talking about issues of culture, which is why world culture is uh, so important to address. But the idea is also that there is some sort of uh, agenda that's attached to this discussion. And that's where I find it very interesting because this is where we can contrast a more institutional perspective with a more um, culturalist or neo-Marxist perspective, which is the way that David Baker's The Schooled Society has been building the argument as well. So it gives us uh, a little insight. Okay. <clears throat> 
So one of the things that I pointed out in uh, that last article there, this one, Comparative Education Research Framed by Neo-Institutional Theory, um, was that there are several versions of institutional theory, and it's simply called Neo because it's new institutional theory. There is an old institutional theory. Read one of those articles to find out the difference. Uh, anyway, there are several versions that exist from a sociological foundation, and there are also other versions that are more political or economic. And so we can look at the ways that the political or economic versions or the anthropological versions, among other versions, have been used in comparative and international education. There isn't just one version of this theory. There are multiple versions. And so that's part of the problem with talking about it as an agenda, because really we need to define which version of the theory has an agenda, if any version does, and how culture or world culture or global culture is uh, conceptualized as a key point of this if we're going to talk about how we can start to frame our ideas or our conceptualizations of globalization and contextualization using these theoretical perspectives. We also can consider the differences in methodology. Are we looking at it from a macro methodological perspective or a micro methodological perspective? Are we looking at standardization or differentiation? Are we looking at uh, international trends or are we looking at local adaptation, implementation, and outcomes? All of these different approaches uh, actually exist within the larger wor world of institutional theory. So it's us to up up to us to figure out how culture is involved in our ideas of globalization and contextualization and what we mean by culture. What is that? So what is world culture and why do we care? All right, I'm going to shift the frame a little bit again. There we go. So you can see that I'm, I'm using some quotes out of this text, which I believe you can find in the library if you're looking for it. Uh, there's also significant portions of it available online through Google, so uh, there's always that. Um, but one of the things that we can start to do is say, all right, look, Lecter and Boli recognize that how people around the globe increasingly organize their common life on the basis of shared knowledge and principles is one way that we can begin to think about the impact of world culture and why we might care. They also po point out that the world now has a repertoire of symbolic forms that enable or in fact impel people to become conscious of the world as a single place and act in accordance with that consciousness. Now, one of the things to think about is, all right, if we're, if we're talking about multiple roles and multiple ways of conceptualizing both the global and the contextual, how do we end up with this idea that the world is a single place? All right, that's a good question for us to begin with. They go on to say on page four, right at the beginning of their book on world culture, that over time, world culture has fostered and in turn benefited from the continuing diffusion. Oh, it, sorry. Over time, go back, <laughs> the Olympics, because they use the Olympics as an example right at the beginning fostered and in turn benefited from the continuing diffusion of sports as a rationally organized, systematically pursued activity, which ultimately crystallized into a global sporting system. All right, now I'm going to erase the ink on the screen because this gives us the opportunity for a little bit of a thought experiment. So you may remember from our discussion last week when we were talking about political realities that there was a lot of discussion of uh, vertical versus horizontal uh, global networks. It's supposed to be a K. I can't get it to do it. All right. And that we had our... Uh, IGOs and our INGOs and then we had our national government or state and then we had our local level where the people resided and we had vertical relationships here and we had horizontal relationships here 
and we had the discussion about all the different ways that we can combine these um, at multiple different iterations right it just gets messier and messier and it ends up looking like this right which is uh, um, really very complex and so I, I guess the, the the funny point about it is, funny being ironic, is that the more that we investigate it, the less simple it becomes. And that's an important recognition for us, in that we have to look at the complexity of the issues of uh, globalization and contextualization, rather than boil them down to a dichotomous explanation or a, uh, a one-sided approach. And that's why I think it's helpful to consider the world culture perspective because it is trying, it's, it's a perspective that attempts to embrace the, that complexity but also provide some way to discuss the role in particular of the supranational in terms of uh, what's happening at the state and of the local levels. <clears throat> So one thing that we can do is we can start to replace, and I did this before with some other uh, work on health in last week's reading, we can start to replace some of these terms with our key issue. So over time, something, we don't know what it is, is in this context, fostered and in turn benefited from the continuing diffusion of education as a rationally organized, systematically pursued activity, which ultimately crystallized into a global education system. Now, this does not mean that local or state versions of education disappear, are obliterated, are uh, made secondary or is subordinate to the global system. But it does mean that a rationally organized, systematically pursued activity crystallized into a global educational system that exists either alongside of or as a part of or vice versa as a, a larger unit that national and local systems are a part of education system. So that's one of the reasons why we might care. So, Lechner and Bolai go on to say in their world culture text that world culture, as we stress throughout their book, is not all of a piece. In other words, it's not just one thing, but rather is shot through with tension and contradiction, notably between forms of particularism and universalism. So you may remember that uh, last week in class, uh, Yuki, I believe, pointed out that in our, our other Lechner and Boli text, and in particular the chapter by Roland Robertson um, of Glocalization fame, um, pointed out on page 93, if you've got, if you've got your text, read along, right? Uh, that there is an emphasis or a, an importance in the distinction between the particularization of the universal and the universalization of the particular. And so we have that sort of same uh, uh, idea here that we have uh, particularization and particularism and universalism, <laughs> tongue tied. So we can see the particular in the universal and the universal in the particular. And this is the shot through with tension and contradiction part. There is not just a world culture. So let's, let's just get that out. And that is part of, I think, the uh, critiques that say that there is a uh, global agenda that goes along with world culture ideas. So get that out of your head. There's not a world culture. There are many world cultures. And there are many ways of getting there. And there are many versions of world culture that sit alongside of or interact differently with state culture, local culture, community culture, political culture, economic culture. In other words, it's complex, right? And so we have to address that. So how is culture then global becomes a key question for us to ask and answer, which we will do when we come back in the next screencast.